Good morning, chemistry class. This is uh, week six of distance learning, your last week. You have three assignments this week, and then uh, I'm done giving out assignments. Uh, you'll have some chance to catch up after that, uh, starting on Thursday. But go ahead and get these done on time. Uh, today is day 67, and we're going to move into a new topic. Um, last week, we uh, discussed gas laws, and this week, we're going to discuss solutions, aqueous solutions. We'll talk about what a solution is and what an aqueous solution in particular is. Uh, so this is June the 1st, and everything is due no matter what on June the 8th. I can't take anything after that. I have to have grades in by late Tuesday. So I, I won't take anything after June the 8th. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna, rather than a power uh, PowerPoint, I'm just gonna give you um, a, um, a quick set of notes here. All right, so aqueous reactions. Um, an aqueous solution is one in which a solute, such as table salt, is dissolved in a solvent of water. Aqueous solutions are transparent, which means you can see through them. Most solution reactions in nature, uh, most solution reactions in nature, such as geology or living organisms, are substances dissolved in water. So dissolving things in water is almost what always happens in nature. There's other things. You could dissolve something in alcohol, but that would have totally different properties than doing it in water. So at this level of chemistry, all we talk about is dissolving things in water. So let's understand what those terms mean. Uh, the first one is solute. And I put six letters, I'll explain that in a minute. So it's a substance being dissolved um, and it's in a smaller amount. So when you think of dissolving salt into water, the solute would be the salt. Next is the solvent. And that's a substance doing the dissolving and it's in a larger amount. In this case, it would be the water. And finally is the solution. And that's the solute and the solvent together. And this, um, there's, there's more of this. So let me explain that. This is just a mnemonic that I use. Students that get solute, solvent, and solution confused. Just think of salt water. The thing you have the least of is the salt, and that's the solute. And that solute is the shortest word. It's six letters. When you dissolve salt in water, the thing, the thing that's the next most, that you have the next most of is the solvent. That's the water. And that's seven letters. So that's a little bit bigger word. And finally, the solution is the salt and the water together. That's what you have the most of, and that's eight letters. So the word solution is eight letters. That's the longest of the words. So you can remember by the length of the word, which is the solute, which is the solvent, and which is the solution. So again, in salt water, salt is the solute, water is the solvent, what it's doing the dissolving, and the solution is the two of them mixed together. That's called the solution. So the solute plus the solvent equals the solution. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Okay, the word homogeneous, literally same type, means that the mixture has the same proportion of substances throughout. So a glass of lemonade tastes the same as the next glass because the ratio of the solute, which is the lemonade mix, and the solvent, the water, is the same throughout the pitcher. Here's some other examples of solutions. Air is a solution of two gases, O2 and N2, oxygen and nitrogen gas. Carbonated soda is an aqueous solution of carbon dioxide mixed in water, carbon dioxide gas. Uh, vinegar is an aqueous solution of acetic acid mixed in water. A dental filling is a solution of mercury mixed in silver. Uh, but that's not an aqueous solution. It's also not a liquid, not in liquefied form. Uh, iodine is a solution of iodine mixed into ethanol. That's also not an aqueous solution. And steel is a, a solution of two solids. It's a solution of carbon mixed with iron. And that's not an aqueous uh, solution. Uh, most solutions uh, we will deal with are, um, are solutions with a liquid solvent. That does not make them liquids. Liquid is pure, is a pure substance. In other words, water, if it has nothing else in it, is considered a liquid. But if you mix something in the water, even though it still looks like a liquid, it's considered to be a solution. So the solute will be either a solid, liquid, or a gas. Concentration means how much of the solute do we have in the solution. So this is what complicates um, dealing with solutions in chemistry, is you're dealing with two different things, a solute and a solvent. And oftentimes you just want to know how much of the solute you have in the solution. Um, you don't want to know um, the whole thing, the, the, the solution. You just want to know about the, the solute, what you're mixing in. 
So if you mix lemonade with powder, uh, lemonade with if you excuse me, if you make lemonade with powdered mix, uh, a concentration of lemonade mix solute will determine how the lemonade solution tastes. If you want it stronger and sweeter, then you add more lemonade mix, more of the solute. If you want the lemon, if the lemonade less strong, you can dilute it, and you can dilute that solution by adding more water, more of the solvent. So there's a number of measures of um, concentration. There's different ways you can measure them. The first, let's deal with an important relationship, and this is true for water only, is that a cubic centimeter, a centimeter is about a half an inch roughly, not a little less, and if you take a cube of a centimeter, um, that's equal to one milliliter. And one milliliter of water equals one gram of water. So what that conversion does is it ties volume of water, how many milliliters, how much space it takes up, with how much it weighs, basically, the, the mass of it. And that's only true of water, that one milliliter equals one gram. Again, this is one of those principles that's defined around the properties of water. They defined a gram to be one milliliter of water. Um, the abbreviations are seen there in the parentheses. One cm cubed equals one ml equals one g. And that's a water. Now, sometimes you it's expressed. This is absolutely the identical uh, expression. Uh, is to say a thousand cubic centimeters equals one liter equals one kilogram. So everything on that bottom line there uh, is multiplied is the top line multiplied by a thousand everything's multiplied by a thousand so sometimes you'll see it expressed as one liter equals one kilogram and that's only for water now let's go on and talk about several different measures of concentrations all right so these are the ways that the concentration of a solute in a solution are measured the first one is molarity and molarity is the moles of solute divided by the liters of the entire solution not just the water the water would just be the solvent. It's the liters of the solute and the solvent together. So if you wanted to compute the concentration of salt water, you take how many grams of salt do you have, and then you'd convert that into moles using a molar mass conversion. And then you divide by the liters of solution of salt water. Molarity is the most important measure of concentration. Molarity is used all the time in later chemistry. If you take advanced placement chemistry or college chemistry, you'll talk about molarity all the time. It's the most common measure of concentration of all the ones we're going to talk about on this page. But one problem with molarity is that it is affected by temperature. If water is frozen into ice, then ice expands. You've all experienced that. If you put a glass of water in the freezer, it'll break the glass because the ice will expand. Um, so the same number of water molecules takes up a greater volume as ice than it does as water. This means that the molarity of an aqueous solution, one where water is the solvent, will change as water freezes. The molarity would actually go down because the denominator of that fraction, liters of solution, would, would increase. And so you'd have less molarity of a certain amount of salt in ice as you do if you had that salt just in liquid water. Again, because it expands, the ice expands, and so it takes up more liters of volume. Okay, molality, and these two, it's obviously, you can see why it's easy to confuse these two, they almost sound the same. Molality is moles of solute, so it has the same numerator as molarity, but on the bottom is totally different. It's kilograms of solvent, so it's the mass of the solvent, not the solution. And if it were water, it would be the ma mass in kilograms of water. So it's moles of solute over mass of uh, solvent. Mol uh, molality uses the mass of the solvent, not of the solution, in the denominator. The mass of a kilogram of water won't change whether it is ice or liquid water, so temperature does not affect molality. Next is mass percent. And mass percent is simply taking the grams of solute, salt, divided by the grams of solution, salt water. Um, you can see that the units will cancel out, grams over grams will cancel out, and then you multiply that by 100%. And that's called the mass percent. It's what percent of that solution is salt, if we're talking about salt water. Okay, mole fraction. Mole fraction is moles of one solute over moles of all solutes and solvent. So it's almost like mass percent, except it deals with moles. It's a fraction. You don't multiply it by 100%. So it's moles of one solute over moles of solvent 
plus any other solutes you have. It's when you want to figure out what percentage of a solution is made of a particular substance. Not one what percentage, but what fraction of a solution is made of a particular substance. All right, parts per million. That's very much like mass percent, except instead of multiplying by 100%, you multiply by a million. So it's grams of solute divided by grams of solution times a million. You use that for things that you have a very small concentration of. For example, people that do water purification, so to be sure that the water that we drink is safe, may be dealing with things like arsenic or lead, which are toxic substances, but there, there may only be three parts in a million of any of those, and that's not enough to be dangerous. So they measure very, very small concentrations in parts per million. It could even be parts per billion. And finally, diluting, dilution of a substance. Uh, dilution means to water down. So if you make your lemonade too strong, you would want to dilute it by adding more water. So it simply states that the molarity times the volume of the solution before dilution will equal the molarity times the volume after solution. And what you do is by increasing the volume of the solution by adding more water to your lemonade, um, that will change the molarity. It'll cause the molarity to decrease. So we'll, we'll give an example of that in the next couple of days. Okay, now we're going to move on and just do a couple of problems today. Um, we'll keep this lesson reasonably uh, short, and then um, I'll give you a few more problems on Tuesday and Wednesday.